guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I'm so glad to have you back checking out what Chris and I are up to. So in today's video, yep, this is our weekly thrift haul makeover video that happens to turn that it's, it's, it's kind of turned into a weekly thing. So I share with you what I find when I'm out thrifting at secondhand stores throughout the week. And then I also include if I envision any of those items to make over, I include those in with this the video. And they end, tend to be a little bit longer video, so I put them on Sunday. So if you have leisure time on Sunday to watch them, or you can watch them throughout the whole week when you get time. Now we are resellers, so we're looking for items that we can resell in our retail booth. We have two booths at a local antique mall, and then we also have a little bit of an eBay. I usually do a lot of my eBay is because people have messaged me that they are interested in an item, and that's how I sell it to them. Let's get into sharing with you what I found this week. So there's so, it's never, it doesn't ever seem like a lot until you gather it all together. Okay, we'll just round robin. So first off, for $6.29, somebody commented about the $29 driving them a little bit crazy. The 29 basically is just the department. That means it is a donated item. So yeah, so it ends with 629.99 or something like that is the new purchase goods. And then you've got the clo closing textiles. So that's where the 29 comes in. It used to be 09, but now they raised it 29 cents. So this is a beautiful little cubby that I don't need to do anything to. Oh my gosh, isn't that not cute? Um, it seems, um, if I remember right, there was something similar to this at a Pier 1 that one of my coworkers had at her little desk. Whether it's Pier 1 or not, I don't see a tag or anything, but look at they're just little porcelain drawers. They're super sweet. Oh my goodness, super sweet. So, yeah, nothing I need to do to this. I probably, I do like the three times, the rule of thumb, the three times what I paid for it. So $18 was what I'd probably sell for it in my retail booth. And there was this swan. It kind of has that Hagar <laughs> type um, pottery to it, which it's not. Actually, it came in a crackle ba cracker barrel box. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of this though, but it's cement or it's ceramic. So do I paint it? Do I not paint it? I'm on the fence of that because sometimes that fakey, I have tried to resell it like that and it doesn't necessarily sell. Um, but I just love swans usually do really well. So this one I'm on the fence about. So you have to stay tuned to see if I do paint it or not. Like I said, it's just a Cracker Barrel and I bought Cracker Barrel stuff before the chickens, um, some kitchenware. And then I had a seagull not too long ago that was new in box and that sold, but I'm just a little worried about, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's one of those things you try as is. And if it sits too long, you can always bring it home and paint it. And then actually this was kind of expensive. It was $10.29 for the swan. The box said $19.99 from Cracker Barrel, but you know, swans do really well. So I probably, I probably because of the $10.29 that I saw the price tag on the box, um, I probably will try to sell it as is for about $24, 22 Yeah, we're getting kind of up there and I don't know if it would sell for more than that. And I don't know how long ago it was for sale at Cracker Barrel for $19.99. So, you know, for $3.29, it was... Now, the terracotta, I thought they were little terracotta pots, caught my eye. And things that are little catch my eye. They're so cute. So let's open these up and show with you, show you what they are, if I can get it untied. They're little pottery mugs. <laughs> so so there's a set of four, this little set of four. Um, I can try to sell them as is. I could put a little greenery in it. I just think there's, you could put a little stamp on there. Um, yeah, I just, I think they're sweet. I, the terracotta, the pottery, the little caught me. So yeah, so then I would just sell them individually just for a cute little decor. Then along with that, there was some terracotta pots. And we're in the season, I like to pick these up because I think that the florals sell real well in these. Um, so, and they don't necessarily have to be the same. I do have a trough that maybe I'll do in this video that I need to upcycle. Um, so some terracotta pots would look very cute in that. And then these were little, so 
yeah so yeah i couldn't little things so cute <laughs> weak moment little terracotta yeah so for 329 i found a set of little canvas florals now aren't they beautiful now this kind of reminds me of the iod transfers that i just did beautiful I, i'm gonna say peonies you, do you agree with me i think they're peonies I have a peonies, a couple of peonies plants. So, so it was a set of four and for three twenty, dollars I'd probably sell them separately for maybe like five bucks a piece or so, you know, I don't think that's too bad. Um, so very, they're very pretty, very pretty. For four twenty nine, dollars I found another little set of Bluebirds of Happiness. It still has its sticker. Now my last one I sold, I sold on, um, on the eBay store because somebody asked for it. So there were these. So there was this one for $4.29. And then they priced these separately. These were $3.29 a piece, but they were two little other little bluebirds. So, um, now, like when I looked them up on eBay, um, it usually was sold as a set. Um, you can sell them separately, but a lot of times it was, it was sold as a set. So if anybody... Like I said, when I'm showing anything, let me know if it's still available. I'll let you know if you want me to pop it on eBay. For $2.29, I, it's funny because for $2.29 seems really cheap for Goodwill. It's a votive holder, but it's glass. It's blown glass. It's handmade. And so it caught my attention. It was just in with the candlestick. So my son is teaching me, just like the crazy lamp lady, of how to look up stuff. And so I pitch, took a picture of it, copy and pasted it to my eBay, took the sold. And yeah, these retail for like $42. So I'll probably try to sell this one on eBay first and see um, how it goes. You can do a buy it now or you can do an auction. Um, so I might do that because I do think that this is a beautiful and that color. Oh my gosh, that color is just gorgeous. So, and then being able to see through it. And so they're just never as pretty on camera, I think sometimes as they are in person. But I, I knew this was something. Um, I It said the maker, but I don't remember who who made these but beautiful now i thought now this one i thought was a great find and i'm keeping this for myself so this was 10 at 29 and it's an old well it's a scale i'm not sure how old it is it's sun sunbeam um i tried to take a picture of it i tried to find some information on it um there is a sticker so it's not terribly old but I do have an area in my house, if you've watched me enough, that I have some vintage scales in. So I thought this one's huge compared to the other ones. It has a little bit of aged patina, but I think it would fit right in. So yeah, for $10.29, uh, probably the cheapest one I bought. So I will, well, I think I did get one at an indoor garage sale once. Um, indoor, excuse me, an indoor flea market for five bucks once. But other than that, yeah, that I thought that was a great find. So it'll go in my little collection. And then another 1029 was this beautiful mantle clock. It's battery operated. Um, it's gonna pick up my ring light. It's gonna pick up the outside because it's a beautiful day out. These are just nice. I do paint these up and they sell a little bit better. The ringer works, it has a ringer. Um, Howard Miller, um, I don't know what, something's rattling. Oh, the battery pack. So it's got, takes three batteries. Um, so yeah, it's it was still, as you see, it's still working. So I didn't have to check out a battery. So I know it still works. So yeah, I would probably paint this up and black clocks do really well. Um, so that's usually what I will do. For $5.29, it's just this nice industrial style desk lamp, side table, what have you, bedside table. Just, I think it's gorgeous. I love, and I don't see, um, other than made in China, I don't see anything. But definitely with this that top, um, the shade, it kind of has that industrial vibe. 
So I would probably just leave it alone and try to resell it as is. So this, I think this was a new purchase good. They get, my store gets a lot of Target returns. And so this was $7.99, but I loved this. This was just beautiful. It's just a decorative globe, but I've seen a lot of people do paint them and then put like transfers on them. So we'll see if I'm able to take it off or if I have to hand paint it, because I, uh, I don't know, maybe I'll be able to. <laughs> um, I think these actually, I don't know if they unscrew or not. I don't know, we'll, we'll see what I could do and how I could upcycle this blue. There, Because there is actually um, some chippage, some chippage, chippage here and there on this itself, so. Okay, for $3.29, it was this beautiful tulip stained glass. I don't have any stained glass. I think my last butterfly just sold over the weekend. So I'll probably just, yeah, I'll just sell it as is. Um, I think the fish wire is okay. That way you don't notice. Sometimes I put wire on them if they don't have anything on them. But I think I just leave the fish wire alone and call it good. And so, so I would... So if you go three times your price, it would be nine, but I think that I could probably get $12 out of um, a stained glass like this, especially since there is, it's, there's no chips and cracks. It's nice and heavy, so it's made well. I did find another little globe. This one was $4.29. Now I've sold this, I think it's just a Walmart, but I've sold little ones like this before. They're just cute. Not everybody goes to Walmart and not everybody has seen these. So yeah, so usually I would say about $12 for this also. So paid $4.29, so that, would, that, that gets that three times your rule of thumb kind of thing. Especially since I don't do antiques. It's not like I have to look up. So for $4.29, this vase caught my eye. I love that orange. Now, if you know and you follow, my son sells glassware. Now this wasn't, I, I didn't see any manufacturers. It is... It's not painted on, it's blown into the glass, so it's beautiful orange. So my son still has a booth, has a bookshelf in our booth of glassware, but he's more um, Murano and the Vaseline and just uh, Prussian glass. And so, yeah, so the uranium glass. So he does a lot of that, but I do pick up vases here and there that are just pretty and catch my eye. And for, I think this was actually... $1.99, it is a Starbucks Chicago coffee mug. Now these are collectible. I do sell, I have hall I have coffee trees. So I like to have Starbucks mugs or Ray Dunn or pottery, even though the pottery is not in the same area. I don't even think I have any pottery mugs right now. But yes, these are highly resellable. At $12, $18 you can get for uh, and we're close to Chicago, so maybe, um, yeah. But I would go about $12 for this, and I know that it would sell fast. Uh, there's a lot of people that collect those city mugs, and they're good They're good side mugs. And then for $3.29, I got another frame that opens up, so you can put something in between the glass. I love that. I just did an IOD transfer on something similar with a wooden frame, so I, lo I like that floating um, pictures. So I was happy to run across this because all I have to do is put something floating. Okay, for $6.29, I found another animal lamp. So yes, isn't he cute? Isn't he a hoot? <laughs> it's a cute little owl. I just actually put um, the soup case set that I did that had all owls in there. So he would be so cute on there if it can I get them in time? Yeah, I don't know how fast those will sell. But <laughs> if I could get them in time, wouldn't that look cute sitting on the one that I made into a side table? Oh, you know, marketing, trying to get people to buy more than one item. <laughs> you can't hurt to try. For $3.29, I picked up one of these um, little creamer. I've actually sold these before. I usually just go for the white, but the green does really well. The shape does really well. So I would probably resell this for $9. Um, yeah, so yeah, usually when I, this this style with this green sells really well, even in the red. Once where I run across the red, um, it just says made in China. 
So it's not ironstone or anything like that, I don't believe. Um, but yeah, it just has that nice little classic look that people like. Now this next piece was $5.29. Um, I don't know anything about it. I, it does not feel like it's got any weight to it. So it's probably like a Hobby Lobby piece. But I thought, how pretty would this be with some greenery? Um, maybe some kind of a bigger votive or something. So I, I like the color that it is. I love that gray color. Maybe add a little patina to it, you know. I like those patinas. It will make some of the details pop and put some kind, put something in it. It just needs something in it. So sometimes not everybody can vision the same as we can vision it. It looks like it might, I don't know, maybe it's a little wonky or is it my video? I don't know. So we'll see how that that turns out. And for $5.29, even though I I don't know if I needed another tray, but <laughs> but it was wire. And the nice thing about this is you can gather your stuff, you can have your plant, you can have a you know candlesticks, you can put, have a collection of Bibles, <laughs> um, books. So I yes. And then when you go to dust, you can pick it up because it has handles. So I just thought this, nothing I have to do to this at all either. So I'd probably resell this for about $15, I would think. I just, it's in great shape. Now this next find was um, caught our eye only because of selling on eBay. And it's a gas pump liquid dispenser. So I thought it was kind of neat. And then the pictures were older. Um, I haven't got it out yet. We tried to in the store, but... Um, so it's vintage, and so this one, there's pieces and parts at the bottom that it needs to be cleaned yet. So look at it's um, Texaco. So you put your drink in there, and then you it yes. So it needs to be cleaned. It needs to be put back together. So it has this little dispenser in here. Um, Another arm stuck in there. It has the base that goes with it. So, and these were really, um, I was surprised when we, so what we do is I use my Google lens and I take a picture and it brings up information. Then I copy and paste onto my eBay on my phone, all on my phone if there's internet. And then, yeah, then it, then you go to your sold items, your filters of sold items. And then these were really selling. I, I can't even tell you. Um, so yeah, this would probably be either an auction because of how, of what this is. Um, yeah, look, oh, there it has this little hook to hang out. How cute is this? So, yep, need to get that cleaned up. Just cute in somebody's bar area. The pricing I can't remember right offhand as I'm trying to get it back into the box. My intent when I started this journey was never just to be a reseller like that or doing, but why not? If you see the piece and it comes up, why not? Who doesn't need money? <laughs> I'm just saying, who doesn't need money? So then my next, I have just two pieces left. So for $5.29, it's a mirror. So you're going to see my, um, yeah, here, let's show you my decor first. So just a beautiful beveled mirror. I don't think I have too many mirrors right now. So I do need to get a grouping done, but I'll probably do this one in this grouping. The thing about mirrors and wall decor, it takes, because they're so large usually, it takes up the whole shop. So yeah, so that was a nice one to be able to fit into this. And then my last are these two little shutters for $4.29, just some primitive star shutters. I can see putting some wire behind there. Um, I like the chicken wire or the netting type of wire. So, and then painting these up. So yeah, these are very cute decor. Put a window in the middle of it. So that is it for this week's thrift haul. This is what I found when I was out secondhand shopping. And now I'm going to share with you what I'm going to do to a few of these items to get them ready to resell. Well, let's start right off with this frame. I, I'm probably inspired by the pink flower that's already inside. So all I need to do is take all the tags off. I don't think anybody actually even ever used this frame. So I was happy to come across it. So it has nice little tabbies that hold another frame in that's holding the glass. So I just need to get that removed 
take off the inside papers and get this glass cleaned up. Sometimes as a flipper, it's nice to have something that is easy. And how easy are these transfers? It is so nice. I think I have, this is my third video using, so I'm still using up what is in that pack. So yes, I have this last large one left of the roses. It's a little tight fit to have the wording at the bottom, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that off and then just make up my decision where I want it to be, if my wording needs to stay or not stay. And then if that's fine, then I'll leave it as is. And then I'll measure off and make sure that I'm centering it before removing the backing. I have it centered and where I want it to be, I can remove that backing paper because shoo, those transfers sure do stick quick onto glass. So now I can start rubbing. And I had my Cricut tool handy, so I grabbed that. I'm like, I can rub with that. Actually, it did work out really nice. get it put back together, it can't get much easier than that. Next up is this thingy about I'm not really sure what to call it, a uh, metal cloche baby. So yes, the two pieces come apart, but you can tell at the bottom that it had water damage. So this is the perfect candidate and it gives me a reason to get to use those patinas. In my description box below, I will link all the patinas in my Amazon store. So the fun with patinas is you just keep layering it until you like it. I love the three colors playing off of each other, the rust, the turquoise, and the brown. So I'm going in with the rust first and I'm just blotting it on. I kind of do a dry brush technique where I blot some of it off on a paper plate and I like those stencil brushes from the Dollar Tree store since you use a lot of the tapping motion I'm not too worried about ruining a Dollar Tree brush. For this piece, my goal is not to cover the entire item. I just want to take some bits and pieces here and there just give it that aged look and as you notice as I'm adding on the turquoise aqua -y color it kind of starts doing and oxidizing into a green patina. <music> So it looks like I'm going to be hand painting. No, this would not come apart. I tried to figure out how to tape it off, but that was kind of awkward and it just, there wasn't a flow to tape it off. So let's just get the tags off and get it cleaned up. And yep, I'm just going to repaint this by hand. First, I'm gonna go ahead and just use some wood filler just to fill in where any of those big pieces of tile are missing. So just a little bit of the wood filler, since I'm painting over it, I think we'll be fine. I'm gonna paint this a spinny globe. I'm going in with Waverly Ink chalk paint. It'll take about two coats. This is a very shiny surface, 
but I think I love that black and that the silver, it is good quality silver on this piece. Not like it's silver, silver, but you know, the color of the metal is just gorgeous. After my two coats are done, I know it looks a little bit chalky, but once I seal this in with some spray polycrylic, it will all blend in. You won't see any of those brush strokes. And then why my polycrylic is still wet, I'll need to go ahead and go with a wet wipe on the metal to wipe off that polycrylic so you don't feel a texture on the metal. But other than that, it should be good to go. And I did toy a lot with putting something on there, a transfer, a stencil, but nothing screamed to me. So for right now, I'm leaving it as is. Now we're up to this mantle clock and I'm just gonna get it detagged give it taped offers and then clean it up. Now I'm not gonna, the face will not come off so I don't have to worry about removing that, but I do wanna spray the outer brass black also. So I'm going to just tape off the face of the glass. And then I decided the tag on the bottom explained who it was with a serial number. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that alone. Then using Rust-Oleum's paint and primer in the flat black, I'm going to go ahead and get it sprayed up. I'm going to seal it in with some polycrylic. Polycrylic is dry. I'm going to go in and there's some sharp edges that are really going to pop. So I'm just taking some 220 sandpaper and just running the sandpaper over just that sharp edge getting down to that wood. It's just going to pop the details. And then after I'm done doing that, I will go in with some steel wool to open up that polycrylic. So yes, if you guessed it, yep, we're going in with Wavered Lee's Antiquing Wax to richen up that black. Just that brown wax on black just helps pop the details and just richens up that black. up is this gorgeous mirror. I love the details. I love that it's beveled glass. Just seems a little bit more higher end to me when I see that beveled glass. So I'm just going to go ahead and tape off the whole mirror area because I want to be able to spray this piece and protect that glass. Now that I got it all painted up, I am, yep, I'm doing crackle. A uh, video ago, probably yesterday's video that you all saw that, um, yeah, I did some wall decor and one of them was I had put a, that transfer on that mirror and it sold as soon as I put it in the booth. So heck, you got to try again. So yes, I'm going to do the crackle technique again on this mirror along with some type of wording on the mirror itself. So just going in with that nice coating of Dollar Tree glue, why not? And then just letting it dry just a wee bit before moving on to my Kills paint and primer in white. Mm -hmm. 
see what we have in our Cricut Design Space for fresh flowers. So I just, in the search engine, that's what I was going for. I wanted a little bit of detail. So this one right off the bat was perfect. I'm kind of matching not as much as that beautiful redesign. My mirror sign is more than a 12 to 12 mat. So I'm going to have to turn this so it can fit a 12 by 24 mat. That way I can have it size appropriate fitting up most of the mirror space. I've done enough crackle now that I have come to realize that each piece is unique. Whether I polycrylic in between, whether I help it with a heat gun, they just are unique. Just how the paint adheres or absorbs in. This was a resin frame, so it didn't necessarily absorb in. So you have a little bit of different crackling going on this frame. But I'm going to go ahead and get the cleaned up, the glass cleaned up with some Norwex cloth to make sure I have a good clean surface to put my stencil, which is vinyl, on. Could anybody tell me the trick? I always giggle when I watch people on YouTube and they are just taking their vinyl off and all the letters are left behind. I don't care what technique I try. It never goes that easily. And especially when I've done a, huge, a bigger one, I don't want it to... Vinyl stretches, so if I grab a letter and it stretches, then I have to recut. So I always go in gingerly. I have trust issues because I've had to throw away too much vinyl over the years when I'm doing this. But how do you all get that just to pull up and it looks beautiful? I've tried curved. I tried upside down. I've tried attaching the transfer on top of the vinyl. I yeah i yes it was, sometimes it's the stenciling of painting it is easier than going in and trying to save each individual letter And if I was in the, for a glutton for punishment of trying to get that vinyl separated from this, I, ex I actually found some old transfer tape and I'm like, hey, this is still a good piece. Let me go ahead and use it. And it had been used. And so then now I've got new struggles because it really didn't stick very well to the transfer tape. I guess there was a reason I left it behind in my old craft room over our attic. So here I am gingerly trying to, yeah, <laughs> that didn't work for me either. I just love to share with you that nothing ever really turns out perfect. You can edit it all out, but I think it's more fun to share it. Okay, I didn't even want to be tortured watching it again. <laughs> the pain of going through that two times in a row. So now I have my, it's on my transfer tape. I know it's not going to stick <laughs> really well to the mirror, but the vinyl will. So I did cut it so I could just grab it and it almost fits completely. So I'm just really trying to letting it hover over it and then just slide it. It should be because the transfer tape has squares on it. I can just count my squares and then I should be even in the mirror. Redesign transfer had a outline of silver. Even though I'm not going to be able to do that same type of outline, I just thought to tie this vinyl in with the distressing on the crackling on the frame, why not go in with just some of the silver wax that'll stick? It will stick. Trust me, it'll stay right on there. So I'm just going in with a little, little paintbrush and just doing the outer edges and all the little details. Just, it'll just give that vinyl a little bit something different. Amazingly, I even surprised myself I was able to keep it off of the mirror. So now I am just going to go ahead and it already had one eyelet hook in there for hanging, but I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit more secure with two and put some fresh wire for hanging. Mm -hmm. 
so now after getting these all cleaned up these sh cute little primitive star shutters now i know you probably think oh they're already black that actually was a it was a very dark navy so i'm gonna go in and freshen up that i don't know what paint that was i, I don't want anything to prevent it from sticking so i'm going to give it a fresh coat of the rust-oleum paint and primer and i really don't think that you necessarily have to do the polycrylic in between when you're doing the crackle effect so i'm trying testing it out on these pieces not doing the polycrylic to seal that black paint in but i am adding uh, some colors to peek through underneath that crackle so i've got the dixie bells barn red i love this it just evaluates it into that farmhouse of multicolors of whatever color you had that year to paint your shutters so white black red perfect but now i need to go ahead because i'm impatient for paint to dry and use the heat gun to help it along to dry I'm going to go in with the Dollar Tree glue. I just pour it. It's easy to pour in a bra pour it in a bowl and then just brush it on. And I think it all depends. You can do it in spots. You can do it. I think for this, I'm just definitely want to go into where I know that the red and the black so I can see some of that red. You can paint it on the whole piece. That is, I think that's the, my obsession with doing the, this is so much fun. Every item seems to crackle a little bit differently. Now I need to dry it just a tad bit just so it has a little bit of a skim. So I just go over for a couple seconds. You can kind of see how it starts to not be shiny at the top before moving on to spray it with my Kills Paint Primer and my True Coat Sprayer. Now, not that I don't love the star, but I would like to, look at that beautiful crackle. I actually would like to put a wreath on this. Now, I, last time I did something similar, it had a three star set. Same thing, I'm kind of reproducing what I know just sells. So I had put a wreath on that and that sold really well. So I actually want to create my own using some embroidery hoops, the small embroidery hoops. Now I have this, it's a swag garland hanging hanging greenery anyway so i've had it in my stash i use it as greenery in my booth nobody actually ever buys it because you can buy it 50 percent off at hobby lobby and it's called baby grass and it's one of my favorites because of the variation of green it goes with spring summer and fall into winter i've had a wreath in hanging in my main bathroom forever that i made that i absolutely love and all i did was use a little embroidery hoop and hot glue to make a cute little wreath. So that's what I'm going to do today. So this was the swag itself was, the stem itself was like $12, $14, depending on what their shipment is. So half price go six, $7. It I actually got two um, wreaths out of this. So that I think is pretty cost efficient to make your own. Time consuming a little bit. The time consuming part is waiting for the glue to dry. So if you're impatient and you don't want to wait for your Gorilla Glue is what I'm using for that good bond. You could use fishing line. You could use foil wire from Hobby Lobby. But the thing I like about this piece is that the top of it is not wired. That's how it hangs down. So it's easier to mold around the shape of the embroidery hoop. I just worked my way around that wreath and filled in if I saw any gaps. And this is what it turned out. Just a lovely, fun wreath. So I'm just going to go ahead and put hot glue to apply. I'm doing it on the entire wreath because I'm not sure with the star where it's actually going to hit. It's kind of a guessing game. So I'm just going to glue the whole back of it and then press it down firmly. If you'd like to stay, I'm going to be making over the pieces that I got from my sister-in-law in the state finds, which I think all these pieces are just from my sister-in-law. So I'm going to start off with this 
Yes, it is a foam frame, but once we get done with it, you will never know until you try to lift it up. So the first thing I need to do is get all the crackled paint off because paint won't stick to the crackle paint. It'll just fall off and I don't want you to see the foam. And then I need to fix the crack that's all the way through. I always tell myself that I'm going to make a video of things if you are a flipper that you should have on hand. And CA glue is definitely a, one of those pieces because it is a glue similar to a super glue, but it has an accelerator, a chemical reaction that helps within 15 seconds for it to dry. So all I'm doing is I'm getting it into that crack, shifting the frame around so it's working its way down, and then I'm going to go ahead and spray the accelerator on it and then quickly hold it, clamp it with my hands for it to set up in 15 seconds. It's so nice because you can do this in the process of making an item over and you don't have to wait for glue to dry. Well, not more than 15 seconds anyway. This frame was already chippy, we're going to add some of the Dollar Tree glue to it before spraying it up and letting it crackle. Since my makeover videos always tend to be on the longer side, just note that I always do clean all my pieces, just some crud cutter, deglossers, what I've been using lately, sand anything that needs to be sand, remove hangers, sand, and, you know, I do the backs, the fronts, I make the whole piece look pretty. And so, and the black color, I always get this question, why do I color everything black? The black has a primer in it, and that's the color, especially on my crackle paint, that I want to see underneath that white. In a couple of pieces, I actually put glue on the top of them before painting them black, but by the time you painted them black and put the white, it was worthless. It wasn't even... You couldn't see that. I thought maybe it would crackle upon crackle, but it didn't really, so I really probably would not suggest that so that's why I did edit that part out if you see some crackling going on in my black paint by the end of after putting the white you don't even see it so I was just trying a technique is what I mean I try to make my backs look just as pretty as my front and so that it doesn't if they're supposed to look resemble, and this is a salvaged piece, a salvaged piece, I don't want it to be crisp, so I'm just going over with a sander. I just painted the backs easily with the Waverly Ink chalk paint because it's so pigmented and it covers in one coat, but you need to seal that chalk paint in with a little bit of polycrylic, and I'm just running the sander over it to make it look like it is, it is aged because I actually wanted to run the sander over the entire piece. I wanted to see if I could get down to some of that yellow because the black crackle did not work, so you can't even see that underneath crackle is what I was talking about. So I'm going to go in and just distress it a little bit more. I wanted to look have a little bit more age to it, but I do love that crackle. And then this had hangers already on it, so I'm just reattaching some wire. It didn't have any wire. That way the new owner can easily hang it. And I know I could have put board or something in the middle, but I think it's kind of fun as a salvage piece. I would leave the space or somebody could add a wreath. Sometimes you just leave it as is and let the new owner, the buyer, use their imagination of what they want to use it for. couple more pieces I'm just going to show you the end results of. I know that my video is going to be, I have one technique I really want to show you that I saved for the last. So these were those feet that came off a piece of furniture. 
absolutely love the crackle. Now this was just a wooden block that was thrown in and I tried to reproduce that little salvage piece that I had done in the last video. I love this. And then just fresh coat of white paint on this ladder just gave it a little bit of new life, a little bit of distressing. Just makes it a little bit cleaner to put in one's home or whether I use it for staging in our booth. And then that door, oh my goodness, yep, just a fresh coat of paint. Took the sander over it to bring back out some of that age. And the nice thing about this door is yes, I did paint over the other side. So both sides are an option. So if one buys it for their home and they get tired of it just seeing the beadboard, they can flip it around and have this old barn door look. And the box that had the hanging system on it, why not add some reclaimed wood shelves to it so it is definitely a primitive piece but it still keeps that rustic and it's very useful with a couple shelves. This is what I wanted to show you. Not the fakey flowers that are in here, but this cute little metal trough and I've had it sitting around longer than I probably should have. But as I'm editing and doing these videos for you, I try to throw in not only pieces that I shared with you in my haul, but a piece or two here and there that has been in my stash and I'm really working. I'm only at a box now. I went from shelves full to just a box. And now I finally came up with an idea for this piece, but I got to remove all all the flowers and I got to get this foam out of the bottom oh of course it's glued in so that's not always as fun but I'm excited to make over this piece one of its legs is unattached so I'm just going to mix up some JB Weld which is the two-part epoxy type I'm not really sure if it's epoxy or not but it's a two-part that works wonderful for metals so and this actually is the wood version that we bought at a hardware store that's going out of business but I'm using up what I have as a course so you just mix it and then you put it on and I'm gonna get it on and then use some masking tape as a clamp to hold it until it dries and usually within about an hour it is good and secure how many out there, if you raise your hand and I could see your hand, would tell me that you've tried to age galvanize or tried to age this new metal? Now, I could not get all the glue off the bottom, so it's mine. Anyway, I was going to be using it in my decor. So I came across a different recipe that I had never tried before. I've tried all those other, the works, the lime, the steel wool the the whole mixture but i can't say that i've ever tried this mixture so it is distilled vinegar and then hydrogen peroxide and then salt so when i saw the recipe i didn't screenshot and of course i didn't save it what the mixture was of how much of each substance i needed i probably should have searched a little bit before mixing it up but i i remember that the person used like two gallons to be able to immerse this so i'm just using one of our wash buckets to fill it up and then i'm just going to add all the ingredients together and see if it ages this metal or not how many of you have tried and failed and left things sitting with certain things overnight and you come and you want rinse it off and it's still just as new as the day you bought it i think i really only needed table salt not the coarse salt but in my theory i thought well the coarser the better it would it would work even more so i just guesstimated to cover the bottom of it i thought okay that looks good i'm covering it it'll sit on there and then as soon as i started to see like a smoke a chemical reaction going inside the water i was very excited so i started to dunk it right in so i set my timer for 10 minutes i thought well i'll keep checking it every 10 minutes because i really don't know but i've never seen smoke or a chemical reaction coming up in a liquid before that was way cool Fortunately, I probably need a small kitty pool full of distilled vinegar to get something that would totally immerse an object. So I 
yeah, this is what I came up with. It was the biggest bucket I had for the dep. And then, yes, 10 minutes. Look, at it already started to... Then I was afraid I was going to have a line. And so then I wet a towel. And oh my goodness, <laughs> yeah, it worked way faster than probably because of my mixture. And I will get the right mixture and share it down in the description below. But I actually, I don't mind it. It's that perfectly imperfect so what i did for the next round is i just wrapped it in the towels that were soaked in don't worry i do later on get gloves on it didn't really hurt my hands by any means but yes so then i just started soaking the other half because the first half within another 10 minutes was too long probably because of my chemical reaction but i do have these other two watering cans that i want to try the same technique on so here is what it looks like i don't mind it at all it's not this one side's a little bit more than i wanted it to i think I, you actually could have just wrapped it in a towel of this stuff you guys especially with the um <laughs> the strength that i had made it but I am happy as a lark to actually, usually I've always done it and it's nothing has even moved, even with the steel wool. So, and it probably has to do with really what type of galvanized, it probably was not expensive galvanized, expensive tin, aluminum, um, what have you, but I do, I'm excited that it actually changed. Now I am doing this on my back deck area. I don't, you know, vinegar supposedly can kill plants. So I was trying to keep it away from my plants. I'm gonna rinse this off as best as I can, making sure all the chemical is off. And then I was doing it on top of our bonfire, our little propane fire pit that needs to be redone is on our list to do this summer. So I knew that was safe. So you definitely want to have an area that, yes, yeah, it actually works. You make sure that you're in an area you don't want to get destroyed. I'm doing one of the galvanized watering cans. Now, after 10 minutes, we had nothing. So I thought, okay, I'm going to go in and I'm going to get a piece of steel wool and I'm going to start scuffing this up and seeing if that helps. So, yep, I'm going to just take it along the entire thing while it's still in the chemical making sure that I get most of the spots, but maybe I didn't want, I maybe I got this one a little too well, but I do think it depends on what thickness, how well made this item is. If, if you saw the bottom of this, this was a $5 one that I thrifted probably from the Dollar General. So I don't think it's as high end of a metal, but I am happy that they're not shiny. Oh, I'm using the same mixture. It what I remember from reading that yes, you could actually pour this back into the vinegar bottle and keep reusing it. So I guess it doesn't lose its chemical reaction. But as you see, as adding the steel wool, it's uh, really rusty water now. But I'm gonna have to do the same thing where I put the towels on top of it because it yeah, there's just I I don't know what would be. Do I put it another galvanized? The watering you know one of my big ones um <laughs> to do a, i just didn't have anything that i could think of at the time big enough so i am super excited yes this one after i did the steel wool did go ahead and start to change this one actually changed a lot it was definitely almost in the black and then the second one was perfect that was a little bit more better grade of metal so it just got that gl glossy um, shiny off so i'm happy to share this with you i will search better i'll get that in the description box the whole chemical or if i can link the guy the person that i found it on pinterest i will go ahead and do that maybe i can find it in my search engine well, I hope you all that were curious at the beginning stayed at the end or fast forward so you get to this part. I do, I know that it's not perfect, but an aged galvanized bucket or watering can isn't perfect either. Yeah, I might have got some dark spots, but I absolutely love it. I love everything about it. I will, and yes, I do have to, if the it becomes wonky, I might take it back in the shop and fix that leg. Yeah, the wood one probably didn't hold up into the chemical mi mixture, but and yeah, look, it, it actually rusted a tad bit, and I don't mind that at 
all, as long as it doesn't get on my poor furniture that Chris just spent all that time redoing. But yes, these are pieces and parts that go on our back area perfectly with the galvanized. And you'll be able to tell the difference in this piece because of probably the thickness and the make of the metal to this piece that just has that nice aged to it that's a little bit better metal but I don't mind either of them I was happy that they didn't look shiny and new and they fit into my watering can wall on my retaining it's the little things that make you happy but I will link the recipe I'll find it for you all down in the description box so you can learn and probably do a little bit better than I did So thank you for watching today's video and as always tell me which one of the items that I thrifted were your favorite and if you liked any of the items that I made over. This is this is Squirt. I just always have to have a cat in our video if I'm indoors. So thanks again for watching today's video guys and as always if you're part of our YouTube family thank you so much and if you're new and you're checking out the content for the first time and you liked what you saw please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what we're up to. Bye.